Hey, in this tutorial we will check out the new V-Ray 5 update 1 and we'll go through the major new features such as the new asset browser, the new way how to do translucency, the updated masking feature for compositing and much more. So stay tuned. So update 1 for V-Ray 5 has just been released. So in this video let's check out some of the key new functions and explore how we can use them. So one of the main new features is this new asset browser that you can find up here in the toolbar. It is called Cosmos Browser and if you click it, it will open like this new integrated asset browser. So this one is not to be confused with the material browser that was already part of V-Ray 5 and this one only contains V-Ray materials. Before it was called Asset Browser, now it has been renamed to Material Library Browser and then this new Cosmos Browser is basically a library that contains a lot of pre-made models that you can just drag and drop into your scene and also has a category for different HDRIs. Let's check out the models first. So for the models, there are different categories that you can find up here or here. For example, you can sort different furnitures with different subcategories, different lights, different vehicles, people, and so on. Once you found the model you like, you just click it and you can see some of the properties like wireframe and so on. And then if you want to have it in your scene, you just download it here and it will take a moment. And then once the download is completed, you can just drag and drop it directly in your viewport. So now let's add some new models by just clicking here on this main category and then we only see the downloaded ones. We can add this telescope here, for example, and then also this piano. And then just like this, you have already a bunch of interesting models in your scene. And since they come in as V-Ray proxies or already signed up with a material and everything, you can just start rendering right away. You will immediately get a quite good result. Additionally, there's a category here for HDRIs. So if you click this, then we can see all the different HDRIs that are part of the Cosmos browser at the moment. So you have ones for days and ones for evening. And then once you find some HDRI that you liked, for example, this one, you just click and drag it into your scene. And then you immediately get a V-Ray dome light with the proper HDRI already set up and ready to render. Another nice new feature is that now V-Ray materials are represented much nicer in the native 3ds Max viewport. So you can see all of those basic properties in the V-Ray material are basically supported. And that also includes stuff like glossiness here, for example. So if you go lower with the glossiness, then you will see that the material also appears more rough. You can turn on or off for the reflection. You can make it a metallic shader and so on. So all of this is quite nice. Also here, the different IOR curves are also supported. So this is quite good. And then also even stuff like, for example, here glossiness maps are also represented correctly in the viewport. So here I map the texture into the glossiness. You can see you have like a different variety of glossiness. Yeah, and the advantage of all of this is that if you now do a rendering, you will notice that both of them, they look quite similar. Even this one here is a proper ray traced rendering with global illumination and so on. And this one is just like a real-time representation. They actually look quite similar and you can do most of the changes already here in real-time in your viewport and can expect that you will get a quite similar result in the final rendering. So speaking of the Vera material itself, there has been a change about how the translucency system works and also how the fog color for refractive materials is being handled. So here we have a glass shader, for example, if I want to give it some reddish tint in here, then I have now this depth parameter in here. And this one works kind of inverse to how it was done previously before you had like this fog multiplier. And the higher you went with the value, the stronger your fog effect was. But here it's basically the opposite. So if you go very low, then you will have a very strong effect. And if you go higher, then you only have a very subtle effect. But the real update lies here in these two different new translucency modes. So there's this volumetric mode and subsurface scattering mode. Volumetric will be used more for like liquid materials such as orange juice and so on. And then subsurface scattering will be used more for, for example, skin-like materials. So let's see what happens if we switch here to volumetric mode. And then first you will get some kind of weird colors. This is normally because the fog color value is too high. So if you go here to a kind of lower value and then at the same time also reduce the depth in here, then you will get already some kind of translucent effect here going on. And at the same time, you could also change the scatter color here, for example, to like something like yellowish to make it look a little bit like orange juice, for example, in this case. And then here with this subsurface scattering amount, you can fade in or out the effect. So this one here is the pure refractive material. And then this one here is 
a pure translucent volumetric material. And then if you go halfway, you can kind of blend between both of them. Also, what's important to know is that these two values here, the refraction color and the glossiness, they also both have an effect and it's important to tweak them to get an accurate result. So here I tweaked the shader a little bit more to make it look a little bit like orange juice. And this one uses this volumetric effect in here. And I think the result looks quite nice and also doesn't take too long to render. Then here I have another material which is more imitating some skin-like material. And then this one uses the translucency mode set to subsurface scattering. And in this case, you can turn your refraction color here all the way to black and then control the overall effect with these kind of parameters down here. And you will also get a quite nice result. So apart from the VR material, there are of course also other materials that still can calculate translucency and subsurface scattering in V-Ray. If you want to learn more about those, there's their own dedicated video tutorial in my channel. But all in all, I think it's a great new addition here to the V-Ray material and a great way to do especially subsurface scattering effect here right in your V-Ray material. The compositing feature in V-Ray now supports also masks, which is quite nice and useful. So in your render elements here, you can add different kind of mask elements, for example, this multi mat element or the crypto mat here, or for example, like this VRA material IDs or VRA object IDs. So once you added those, then you will be able to use them in your compositing. So for this example here, I added two crypto mats, which I think is the most easiest way to do masking. And one goes by material names and the other one goes by layer names in here. So this one would group all the objects based on these kind of layer names in here. Then once the rendering is finished, we can start with the compositing. And in my channel, there's a much more in-depth tutorial about how to do the compositing in the v frame buffer. So now let's only focus about the new additional changes, which are the masks. So here I added a color balance, which at the moment is not visible, but you can see once I enable it, it will tint the whole image kind of green. And that's of course not what we want. I only want to tint the car paint here. So once we right click here on the color balance and then choose new layer, there's those three different new mask options down here. One for integer mask, one for multi matte mask, and one for crypto matte mask. So since we added crypto matte mask, I will add this one in here. So now the whole greenish tint kind of disappeared and that's because we first need to define what is actually part of our mask. So if we click this button down here, we can show a preview of how our mask looks like. At the moment it's completely black. So here we can choose which kind of crypto mat we want to select. So I will go by material now. And then with these kind of pickers here, we can, for example, here just click directly in the frame buffer itself. And then we will pick the part from the crypto mat. And if we click this button here again, we can see that now the car paint here is selected. If we want, we can even add other parts to this mask, for example, the wheels or here the windows and so on. And if we don't want to have them anymore, we can just remove them with clicking on this minus button down here. And then we can basically customize our mask and just add exactly the part of elements that we want. So those masks can be applied to these kind of color correction individually, but they cannot apply it to the layers itself. So you can see the layers here are kind of grayed out. But the good thing is you can apply them also to folders. So here I have a folder where there's a bunch of different color corrections inside. So if I enable this folder, it's basically a combination of three different kind of color corrections. And then we can apply a mat directly on this folder in here. For example, this time I will choose the crypto mat that goes by layers. And then I will just pick, for example, the layer that I have here for my headlight. And then you can see that if I now show this preview, the mask will only select the headlights. And then all of these three corrections together will be applied on this folder here. And this folder has a mask that only contains the headlight inside. So that's also quite good to keep everything nice and organized. You don't need to have one mask for each of those color corrections in here. There also was an update how the override material works. So here, for example, you have the option to choose the override material for your objects in your scene. So let's do that. I have this yellow dummy material in here. And then once I start the rendering, I will see that all my car here will get this kind of dummy material applied to. But there's one problem that, for example, here the windows and the headlights and so on, we can't see them anymore because this material here doesn't have any refraction. So all of those original properties are kind of lost. So let's stop this one right here. And then once you click on this button in here, you have an option to choose different properties that will be preserved. So for example, we will preserve the bump, the refraction, the opacity, the self illumination, and we will also ignore V-Ray light materials for the headlights here, for example. 
and then once we start the rendering again, and then we can see that certain properties of our original material, like here the windshields, for example, or the glowy parts here for the headlights, maintain preserve. We can get a much nicer representation of our original car without losing all of these kind of properties. I read that in the future update, you can also maintain the glossiness of your reflection values from what I read, but at the moment, this one is not supported yet. There's now the possibility to add multiple dome lights to your scene and then have them all added together. So here you can see I have three different dome lights in my scene, all with their own unique rotation, all unique properties, and they all use unique HDRIs. So those are the three HDRIs that I'm using. And now once you render the scene, they will all be added together. And now you might ask, this looks actually quite horrible. Why is that ever useful? So here in your light mix, you have the option to control each of the lights separately. So for example, you could switch all of them on or off. So here I only show the light number one, here I only show the light number two, and here show only light number three. And then you're also able to blend them kind of together. So in my case, I get basically a render setup that contains three different lighting setup, and I just need to render one time. Other scenarios could be that you, for example, add three different kind of skies, and then you can blend between these kind of different lighting setup. For example, you use each of them to a value of 0.5 and then they will be blended together and you have a much greater option to change different kind of lighting moods and so on. In our case here, of course, it doesn't really make sense because it always blends also the environment together. But if you have an architectural scene, for example, where you just have an HDI that's set up for the sky, you can blend different kind of skies nicely together and get a kind of unique result that you wouldn't be able to get just by using one HDRI. If you wanna learn more about the light mix feature, by the way, there's also an additional tutorial on my channel that goes into much more detail. Finally, there has been a change to the caustic system. So you can see in this rendering here, I have a refractive material, but it doesn't create any caustic. So traditionally, we would just switch on the caustics here. And the traditional method here is this photon map. So once we do that, we will see that first, a caustic photo map has to be built. And this always has to be done before the rendering is actually starting. Now we can see that we have some caustics here in the scene. But this whole need of a pre-pass is sometimes a little bit annoying because it can take a long time, especially if you have more complex shapes or more complex materials. So there's also the option to switch this one here to a progressive approach. And then this one only works if you do, for example, IPR or if you switch your render here to the progressive mode instead of bucket mode. And once you do that, you will see that it now it doesn't require pre-pass anymore. And then these caustics will be added progressively during render time. Now you can see those caustics were added progressively during render time. And the quality will also increase the longer you render. And it doesn't really require this kind of annoying pre-pass anymore. So that's a very good option. If you don't require bucket rendering, then you can use this kind of option to calculate your caustics. So that concludes the main features for V-Ray 5 Update 1 so far. There's of course a lot of other features that I might cover in an additional tutorial that I will publish on my Patreon, where all of those maybe smaller changes will be also mentioned in there. So you can check out this as well once it's released. And yeah, I think this update is a very nice new addition to V-Ray 5 and it adds a lot of new nice features to it. And I hope this video here gave you a good overview about what are the main changes to. So if you like this kind of content, I would encourage you to subscribe to this channel, leave a like and a comment, that would make me happy. And other than that, see you in the next tutorial and talk soon.